guys, my name is Stacy with Handmade by Stacy J. I've been a crocheter for all of my life, and about a year and a half ago, I decided I was gonna put down my hooks and learn how to knit. I had always been fascinated by the way that the fabric drapes and just how beautiful the cables are and all those really great patterns. So I learned how to do it, absolutely loved it. And now I'm designing knit patterns and you know, all sorts of fun stuff, but I still crochet, it's kind of like half and half. But I wanted to show you, since we're in a time where we're spending a little bit more time at home, I thought I would spend some time with you, kind of like hanging out with a friend that's just showing you a new skill. So what I have is I've made little dishcloths. And these are very easy. It uses just the knit and purl. And in this video, you'll learn how to do a long tail cast on, a knit, a purl, and a bind off. There will be a series of at least six videos that I have planned. There will probably be more, but um, it's just so much fun to do. So I'm glad that you're here with me on this little journey and grab some needles, grab some yarn, and let's get started. So let's go over the materials that you'll need for the dishcloth. First, you will need your knitting needles, which is a size seven or 4.5 millimeter. You will need two stitch markers, your scissors, a tapestry needle, and your yarn. Now I want to show you a couple of things. For stitch markers, you don't need to do this, but it's kind of fun just to have a whole bunch. I got these off of Amazon. They were super inexpensive, and it's nice just to have a whole bunch to work with. They have all sorts of different sizes, and they're just fun little colors. It's totally optional. Some people choose to use just little strings of yarn as their stitch markers. I mean, there's ways to work around it, but I like these handy dandy little guys. And for knitting needles, I just got these not too long ago. I usually work with metal, but wooden needles have a little less slipperiness to them, so they grip the yarn a little bit better. So this is a whole interchangeable set, and they are lovely. They have this Beautiful color, they've got a nice grip. Right here they have it engraved with the size. And the cable itself, I tend to prefer the, the circular needles. The cable itself is not super like, you know, where it just keeps one form where you're always battling with it. This is nice and easy to work with. So I will have affiliate links for these if you guys decide that you might like to pick these up. They are linked to Amazon. They don't charge you anymore, but they help me out by giving me a small commission. Um, this yarn is the Peaches and Cream, 100% cotton. It comes in a cone. I tend to wind mine up in cakes because I like to be able to pull from the center. And I got this on clearance at one of the big box stores and I wound up with enough to make two whole cakes. This is a lot of yarn, and I think I spent like three bucks on it. So it was a really good deal. So keep an eye out in the big box stores or wherever you are, because if you have that option, you never know when you'll need it. And I've been hanging onto this for a while, and it's perfect for dishcloths. This is 100% cotton yarn. It's a number four weight. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. So this is a medium number four weight. And the yarn bands will tell you a lot of information, but the biggest thing for you to know is one, what it's made of. So this is 100% cotton. It's a medium four weight. The bigger the number is, the bulkier the yarn is. So a number four is pretty standard. A number one is a lace weight. Number two is fingering weight. And those are good for knitting like shawls or socks or something like that. Um, four is good for this. Uh, right here, it also tells you what size knitting needles you could use with this yarn to get close to the gauge that they recommend. So here it says a US size 7 or 4.5 millimeter, and that's what we're using for this project. If you crochet, it'll also tell you what size of crochet hook to use. It tells you here that you can wash it and dry it, but you cannot iron it. And I'd have to look up what these symbols are, I don't remember offhand. But this is just perfect for dishcloths because you can use it, wash it, use it again. So let's get started. To begin any project, your first step is to make a slip knot. And there are lots of ways to do it. I'm just going to show you my preferred method. So you have your yarn tail 
and your working yarn is what's connected to your ball of yarn. So I'm going to take two fingers and I'm going to take my yarn tail and make an X with it. So you have an X. Then I'm going to insert my thumb and my index finger. I'm going to grab that yarn tail. In doing so, I'm going to hang on to both my yarn tail and my working yarn, and I'm just going to pull this closed. There's your slip knot. And then to tell it's a slip knot, all you got to do is pull it, and oh, there it goes. So let's try this one more time. So we've got two fingers, make the X, insert thumb and index, and pull that tail. There's your slip knot. If you go to my website at www.handmadebystacyj, you'll see that there is a pattern on how to knit your dishcloth. And this has all of your directions. With it also comes a chart that where you can check off each row that you do. And then you also have another chart. It's called a knitting chart. And this is handy because it will show you where you need to knit, where you need to purl. So all these empty boxes are where you're going to knit. All these little spots here are where you're going to purl. And the way to read a chart is you start with the first row and you're going to knit all the way around here. And on the second row, you'll knit. And it will also give you those directions on here. Where it'll say first row, knit, second row, knit. But then when you come up to your sixth row, you're going to knit five, you're going to purl 34, and then you're going to knit five. So you'll be doing knit, 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 knit five, purl 34, knit five. And this will make more sense to you as we move on with the project. But what I want to show you first <coughs> is that here in the directions it says under the setup rows to cast on 44 stitches. Well, I'm going to show you how to do a cast on and the type that we are doing is called a long tail cast on. So I'm going to show you how to take the measurements to get the right amount of yarn for that. And then I'm going to show you how it's done. To do the long tail cast on, since we know we're going to have 44 stitches, a good way to determine is we're going to divide 44 by four. So that's 11. So we're going to wrap this yarn around the needle 11 times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And this isn't like a set math. You don't have to divide every pattern by four. You can do it by two. I'm just doing this because it's easy. So eleven gives you this much yarn. Now since we're doing 44, we need to pull out enough yarn. That's for 22 stitches. That's for 33 stitches. And this is for 44. And I always take just a little bit more just to make sure that I'm safe. So from here, we're now going to do our slip knot. So we're going to make that X. Pull the yarn through, voila. Now for the long tail cast on method, we're going to insert our needle. We're going to pull up our, pull our slip knot a little bit tighter. You don't want it so tight that you can't move it on the needle. You want it to have just a nice, easy movement. Now, the long tail cast on is my favorite method and there are a bunch of methods out there. So I encourage you to try them but for now, this is what I have to be able to show you. To do it, you're going to create like a cup and you're going to use your thumb and these two fingers to hold that cup. And you're gonna insert a finger there, insert a thumb there while hanging on to those other two strings. So this is what it looks like. Then you're going to take your needle and you're going to scoop up around your thumb and then you're going to rotate your hand and get that working yarn to where you pull it between the loop. Then you're going to close it up a bit. 
And let's try that again. So now you have two stitches that are cast on. <clears throat> you got your cup, open, open, take your needle, scoop it, and then take your other finger, get that yarn, pull it through, tighten it up. Now you have three. So we'll scoop through that because you're going to grab that yarn and you're going to pull it through. We're going to do it for a total of 44 times. And sometimes when it does this, the yarn will get a little bit twisty, so I just loosen it up. Here we go. And this takes a little bit of practice. Once you get the hang of it, you'll be flying through these. Okay, put your needle in, scoop it, close it up. So you're going to do this for a total of 44 stitches to be on your needles. So, so far we have 10 on here. So we're going to do a total of 44 and I will meet you at the end of your cast on. I've cast on my 44 stitches and now the next step in the pattern is right here we're going to knit across for five rows. So that just means we're going to knit one row of this and then we're going to do it four more times. And the knit stitch is a very simple, very simple stitch. It's the first one that you learn to do when knitting and I'm going to show you how simple it is. This is also known as the garter stitch. So to do this you're going to first to hold your yarn let me just show you how I do it. I put mine over the pinky or through the pinky in this finger and then I wrap my hand around to where it goes in front of these two fingers and then my index finger scoops it. This way it keeps the yarn from getting tangled and I can control how tight my tension is. When I first started I used to hold my yarn like this which can work for some people however as I've gotten older and I've been doing this for a long time, my fingers right here would just start cramping. So I found that this way works well for me. So you just scoop it with your pinky and, and lift it up with your index. So let's do this knit stitch. To do this, you're going to take your hook, or your needle, I'm sorry, and you're going to insert it in this stitch. So you'll insert it into the back. Then you're going to scoop the yarn and pull it through. And your first stitch is always going to be just a little bit loose. So I always snug it up just a little bit. And let's try this again. And this method that I'm teaching you is called the Continental Method. Um, some knitters use the English method where they hold the yarn differently. But this is the Continental Method because I've been a crocheter forever. So to do the knit stitch, we take this needle, insert it in the stitch, and you want it to go all the way through. You'll scoop up that yarn. Oops. Sometimes you got to hold it with your finger to help it along. And then you pull it through. Then you slide off that stitch. Now you have two on this needle. Insert your needle through the back, all the way through. Grab that yarn, pull it through the stitch, slip it off the needle. And this is what you're going to do all the way down that row. Now one tendency that a lot of new knitters have is to get these stitches super tight. You don't want to do that. You want to have room for movement. And also, they tend to put their stitches right on the tips of the needles. You don't want to do that for two reasons. One, you can lose your stitch, they'll just slide right off. The other reason is that the size of your stitches is based on your needle. If you're working up here, it can be quite a bit smaller than what it is down here. So I tend to work right about before it starts to taper off. So I work where it's still the needle. And this first row is a little bit tighter to work with, 
but after this you'll be able to just relax and enjoy the knitting process. So I'm going to show you again. Take your needle, insert it, grab that yarn, pull it through. Slip that stitch off, insert the needle, bring the yarn through, slip the stitch off. And this is all you're going to do until you get to the end. So I will meet you at the end of this row. I'm coming to the end of my knit row. I have three stitches left. So we'll just work these last two and this last one we just knit. And there you go. Your first row of knitting is done. How about that? So this is how it should look. And now all we do is flip the needles around and we're going to knit across this row. And what you can do is if you look at your chart, you'll see, let me grab a pen, you'll see that you just did this first row. So you can choose to either mark that off or you can look at this handy little guide right here and I make these with all of my patterns. So just go there, check it off, or do a mark through. This way you can always keep track. If you have to set your, your, your piece down, you can know exactly where you are. Now, the next row we're going to knit and we're going to continue this for four more rows. So we will just insert the needle where it comes out through the back, scoop up the yarn, pull it through, and then slide it off the needle. Give it a little bit of a tug, and then just move your way down. And this is when it'll start loosening up a little bit too, so it'll be easier to work with. And I will meet you at the end of your fifth row. So just continue knitting for four more rows. And I'll see you in just a little bit. I'm coming up on the end of my final knit stitches for row five. And this is what it looks like. So with the garter stitch, both sides look the same. And now we're moving on to our next portion. So in the pattern, you will see that here it says we've knit across the five rows. Now we're going to K5, P34, K5. And what that means is we're going to knit five, purl 34, knit five. And I'm going to walk you through how to do this. This is also when you can use your stitch markers. And again, that's optional, but I do it just to kind of help be my little, you know, trigger for my memory to know, hey, this is where something different might happen. So this is also where, with your chart, you can see that we're going to be knitting five, purling the 34, and knitting five. And this is also going to be known as the beginning of the stockinette stitch. So let's show you how to do this. And when I was learning how to knit, the stockinette stitch to me was fascinating. So it's pretty neat and it's very simple to do. So let's begin by knitting five. So we have one, two, three, Now I'm going to grab one of my stitch markers. I'm just going to slide it on there. And this tells me that I will always be knitting five here because this is what gives you the border. And I'll show you the washcloth that I have. 
so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. This is a blue one that I did. And this has just a neat little border right here. And this is where you can see the knit fives. This is the stockinette stitch that I'm going to be teaching you right now. So let's get started on how to purl. When you're knitting, you have your yarn in the back of your needles. When you purl, you simply move your yarn to the front of the needle, just like so, and then you insert your needle underneath that, through the front of your stitch, you wrap it around, you pull it through, and you slide it off, just like that. It's like a reverse knit stitch. So, again, let's do it with your yarn in front of the needle. You put this needle behind it, insert the front, and you're going from right to left, you're scooping the yarn, pulling it out. Then do it again. Sometimes it's tricky to get the yarn to stick on there. And then you slide it off. Keeping the yarn in the front, insert that needle right to left, bring that yarn around, slide it off the needle. And that's all a purl is. We're going to continue purling until you have five stitches left. And those last five stitches, we will insert a stitch marker and then we will knit those last five. But I will meet you at the end of this purling segment. I'll see you in just a couple minutes. I'm on my last purl. Now I have five stitches left, so I'm going to put on my other stitch marker. And now we're going to knit these last five. So this is where you move your yarn behind your needle, insert your needle into the back, grab it, pull it through. And you'll just continue knitting these five. And then I'm going to show you a little something about the purl stitch. So this is the back side of your work. And the way that you can tell is that your purl row has little bumpies. But if you flip it, you'll see that your stitches are starting to take on a different shape. So your garter was all bumpy, and stockinette starts getting flat. So you can see how these stitches are fairly flat. And this becomes the right side of your work. So if you're ever looking at a pattern and it says RS or WS, the RS is for right side, the WS is for wrong side. So now I'm going to Get out my little chart. I'm going to check this off. And the next row is to knit. And this is where you look at the pattern. So we just did this row. Now we're going to knit across the next row. So we're going to turn the work. And we're going to move the yarn behind the needle insert to this one into the back, wrap the yarn around, pull that stitch up, slip it off the needle, give it a little tug, and we're just going to knit continuously across. And when you get to your stitch marker, you will just simply slip it to the needle. So I will show you how to do that. Because on this row we're not doing anything different. All of our different work is going to be on the back side. So we just slip that over and you just knit across. And I will meet you at the end of this row. So I've completed knitting this row and now you can really see the stockinette stitch taking its form right here. And we're going to move on to this pattern. So for our next row, it says here that we need to repeat steps three and four six more times. 
So we're going to go back to step three where we're going to knit five, purl 34, knit five. Then when we finish that row, we're going to knit. We're going to do this six more times. So I'll get you started on your purl row. So we have the needles and we're going to knit five. And it's very common for knit patterns to have a built-in garter border like this. A lot of them will be knit three. I like the knit five. It's really up to the designer. So we're just knitting five. We're going to slip this marker and this is what tells me that it's time to purl. So I'm going to just purl across. So I've got my yarn in the front. I'm inserting my needle from right to left. Kind of grab that yarn, pull it in, take it off the needle. Insert from the front, from right to left, scoop the yarn, pull it off the needle. So I'm just going to purl down to my stitch marker or until there's five stitches left. Then we're going to knit five. And I will meet you at the end of the purl. I'm coming up to the end of the purling segment of this row. Now I'm going to slip my marker and I'm going to knit these five. So my yarn is in the back. I'm going to pull up my stitch. There we go. Just knit, 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 knit. Pattern. So I'm going to refer to this one more time and then I think you'll be set on your way to be able to continue this project. So you're just going to repeat these steps three and four until you have a total of 12 more rows from those original ones. And this is where it's handy having your chart because you just keep track of that. And this essentially just tells you what to do. So continue working through this. Once you have that done, you have these middle ridge rows, which is where you're going to be creating this bit of texture right here. It's a little bit tough to see because this is on a variegated yarn, but if you're using a solid color, it'll be much easier to see. And you're going to get this by just knitting three rows, and that's what's going to create that on a stockinette stitch. So go ahead and continue this all the way down until you get to the end of step 15, and then I'm going to show you how to bind off. So I've done my last knit row, and now I have the front side of my work here. And if you flip it over, your back side should look like this, nice and bumpy. And then the front should have the nice flat stockinette stitches with the little garter ridges and the border. So now I'm going to show you how to bind off. And binding off is one of the most important things you'll learn about knitting, because if you just pull these off your needles, give it a tug, everything unravels. So binding off will secure it so that that doesn't happen. So let's get started on the bind off. Okay, binding off is very simple. It's essentially done with knitting or purling, and there are a lot of different ways to do it, but I'm going to show you just a very simple bind off knit wise. So you're going to insert your needle as if you're knitting and you're going to knit the first two stitches. So there's one and two. Now you're not going to knit anymore. You're just going to take these two and you're going to grab this first one just like so and you're going to pull it or slip it over that other stitch so that you now have one. Now you're going to do that again. So knit the other stitch and you're going to slip this one over. And that's all you're going to do down this whole row. So knit and then slip. And 
just knit, take the stitch, and slip. And I'm going to remove my stitch marker. And knit, and slip. Knit, and slip. You'll get kind of a little groove going once you get the hang of this. And that is your bind off. So it ends up with just a nice little finishing edge. And I'm going to continue doing this and I will meet you at the end. Alright, I'm on the last couple stitches of this bind off. We're going to slip this last one. This is where it's handy to have needles that have just a little bit of a grip to them. I've done this with metal ones before and they just slide right off. And that can be a good thing and a bad thing if you're trying to keep stitches on there while you work them. So this is the bind off, just like this. And now with this, you're going to cut your yarn, go boink. Sorry, I always do sound effects when I cut things. It just seems so final. Okay, and then you just pull that through to secure it. And then this is your washcloth. Hey, check it out. You made a washcloth. If this is your first ever knitting project, that's pretty doggone exciting, isn't it? So now we're going to weave in the ends. And that's when your tapestry needle comes in handy. So we just thread this guy. And the idea is that you want to go in the direction of the stitches. I like to start my first one just right down the side, just to kind of pull down this nub so it's not so, well, nubby. And then I'm going to follow the direction of the stitches this way it isn't very obvious but I do end up crisscrossing so that way the yarn doesn't come undone because the idea behind these washcloths is that they get used and you want to use them that's the beauty of them so you want to make sure that these are really secure and you'll just do this on both both of your yarn tails and uh, you'll have your finished washcloth. And here you have it all done. So you now have your handy dandy washcloth. Um, if you chose to do this as a scarf, all you would have to do is just keep doing this repeat and then you know, you could decide if you want to do a ridge and a large stockinette area, or if you just want to keep the ridges going continuously. Just end it with your knit rows, and so that way it matches down here on the top and bottom. But this is it. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm going to be uploading some new videos, uh, so that way you can build up on these techniques. and. I hope you have a wonderful day.